future. And we see that on TVN. We see it all over the Word Network. You know, most of those preachers that y'all hear and see, and y'all like them because it's entertaining, that ain't God. Amen. Amen. I'll wait for the amen to die down. Amen. That's not God standing up there trying to entertain you, trying to make you laugh, no. trying to make you feel good. No. The Word is not to make you feel good. The Word is to build you up. It is to encourage you. It is to equip you. It is to prepare you. It is to make you a better person in your behavior and in your conduct. Amen. It is not to make you feel good. Come on, man. If it was all of that, why did Jesus have to be crucified? Why did Jesus have to be crucified if this would make you feel good? Come on now. To make you better. To make you conform to the likeness of his son. Yes, sir. And so in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, and I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. So move with me to 2 Peter 3, 18, because I ain't getting through this whole piece. I know I'm not. I already know I'm not. But, 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 but look at what 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 talks about. It speaks about growing in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. It says these words, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forevermore. Grow in grace. Yeah. You know how you grow in grace? You spend time with the Lord. In your trials, in your tribulations, you grow in grace. You pull on that grace. When you need it, Paul ends this letter with a summary statement of the same instructions with which he began in chapter one of first. Uh, I mean, of chapter one of uh, First Peter's uh, chapter two through. I mean, verses two through eleven. So I don't want to go through that. And this was speaking on um, preserving Christian maturity. And or pursuing Christian maturity and a deepening knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that will lead you to doctrinal stability and it will prevent you from falling and going led astray. All right. That's what growing in grace is. It is to help you to mature in the things of the Bible, uh, the things of Christ. Uh, Satan uses false teachers who will appear twisting and distorting the scriptures which should make you become more aware and be more on guard as you grow in grace. You know, a lot of people are duped in church today because of the fact that they don't know their identity. They don't know who they are. So real quick, and I'm getting ready to close on this note, and then I'm going to come back to this because i got more to this anyway. Let's look at Paul's writing, I mean, I'm sorry, let's look at Peter's writings in 1 Peter's chapter 2. And there's some verses of scripture here that I share with you all on watch night. In, 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 in 1 Peter's chapter 2 and around verses 9 and 10. And, and, and I'm going to go through a line of things in this next message about kingdom identity because I didn't have enough time to work this message anyway because it's, it's too much scripture and, 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 it's, and it's a lot coming from Peter's account. It's a lot coming from Paul's account uh, in those Corinthian letters. So, so let me end it up with this in, in 1 Peter's. In 1 Peter's. Did, did I say it right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2. And, and chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Here we go. Verse 9 says, but you are a chosen people. Uh-huh. So he chose you. Uh-huh. He, he picked you out. Uh-huh. Before your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother and on and on and on and on. He picked you out from eternity past. So you are chosen. He said you are chosen people, a royal priesthood. So just in case you don't, just because you're not called to be a pastor, an evangelist, out of, the, out of uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, you know, those verses that talk about apostle and prophets and stuff like that. Um, just know that he's called you all in here as royal priesthood. Amen. You all are agents to the kingdom of God. Yeah. You all represent the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You represent him. You all ought to have some word in you to be able to share with somebody to be able to minister to somebody because you are royal priesthood. Amen. 
You royal priesthood. You're chosen. You're chosen people. You're royal priesthood of a holy nation, not of the United States of America. All right. It says right here, holy nation, not of this kingdom on this planet, not of Europe and Africa and Australia and uh, Russia and any of those places, not the United Kingdom, but you are a chosen people. Watch this. Royal priesthood called from a holy nation. It ain't nothing holy on this planet. Amen. It ain't nothing holy in this universe. Sin has corrupted it. That's why he's going to bring back a new heaven. You need to read Revelations. Yes. That's why he's going to bring back a new heaven, a new earth, yes. because it ain't nothing holy down here. Yes. All right. Chosen of a holy nation. So he calls you chosen. He calls you royal priesthood. Chosen of a holy nation. A people belonging to God. Now this is, is where you get, this is where he, he, this is where you're special in his eyes. In some yes. translations, it calls you peculiar, which means you're unique, you're different than everybody else on this planet. Why? It's because you are a son or daughter of the Most High God. He says you are a special people. Jesus. See, he's distinguishing right here. He, he's letting us know that belong to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were a people, watch this. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Yes, sir. Yes. That's just that's just that's just one point. And so and so if I had time to break it down, all of those would be points. I could talk about that till Jesus come back. Chosen. Ecclesia. Called out. Of a holy nation. Amen. Royal priesthood. I feel good. I don't know about y'all, but that's what he calls me. I, I, you, you ain't got to put yourself in that group, but me, me personally, I, I'm in that group. I belong to him. I'm special to him. He called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And now I can proclaim the good news. I can proclaim he had mercy on me. God Almighty, every time I think about Lamentations chapter 3, when I think about the new mercies, I'm not living on old mercies from yesterday, Ms. Rose, or last year, 2018. I got some new ones this morning. When he woke me up, put me in my right mind, new mercies was all over me. New mercies. God Almighty, I walk in that too. I walk in that new mercies. Grace. Yes. God Almighty, grace, the grace of God. I walk in that. Every day. Because I can. Because you can. You can walk in it too. You can call it too. You got to claim it too. Amen. He says you're royal priesthood. You're chosen of a holy nation. This is not your world. You don't belong to this world. And just in case you do think you belong to this world, keep having birthdays. Because one day, your time is going to check. God is going to check your clock. You're going to check the time in. I'll wait for that. You've got to ask the once for a man to die. And after that, the judgment. It's the time to be born and it's the time to die. One day, he's going to pull your card and he's going to check that giant. Bing! And you're going to have to go home. You're going somewhere. Where are you going? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you even know your place? Do you know you're called out? God himself, the creator, called you precious. He called you his own. His own possession. He called you ambassadors. Yes. He called you redeemed. Do you know that you have been brought with a price? Yes, Amen. yes. The redeemed of the Lord, the shed blood of God. Jesus Christ. Do you know you're a saint? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to just call yourself a sinner just because? Just because. <laughs> I'm a saint, even though I fall short of his glory. Right. Yeah. Saint. Yeah. But I'm a saint. That's right. Because he calls me a saint. That's what he called me. Amen. What about you on the day? Do you know who you are? Because I'm telling y'all, see, we're going to have some fun with this because I'm going through this because I got to tell you who you are. I got to at least get the blood off my hands. Amen. I got to tell you who you are. Whether you want to accept it or not, that's up to you. That's not my choice. I don't have anything to do with how you choose. 
I don't, I don't have anything to do with how you think. I have everything to do with me preparing you. Because he's coming back. Amen. Will he find you faithful? Because <clears throat> he's coming back. Jesus asked the disciples, he said, I'm coming back. He said, but will I find you faithful? That's what he said. The doors of the church are open. I don't know about you, but I couldn't even finish that. Still got a lot on that paper. I want to take it off next time. Next time when I talk about kingdom identity, y'all will probably go and study some of this stuff. You should, you ought to. You ought to hold on to some of this divine nature. You're partakers of the divine nature. 